Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This year's DockerCon was absolutely fantastic and there was a focus on two main areas. The introduction of Docker Desktop for Linux and Docker Desktop extensions. Now just a note, whilst I'm actually wearing this Docker t-shirt, this video is not actually sponsored by Docker. I'm creating this independently and all of the thoughts are actually my own. And it just so happens that I actually like Docker quite a lot, hence why I'm actually wearing this. So at KubeCon Valencia, I caught up with Shashank, Eva, and the Docker CEO, Scott Johnston, where they were demonstrating Docker Desktop for Linux and extensions with a Flappy Bird type game with Moby as the character. When I got home, I was actually looking through a blog post published by Philippe Cruz. And whilst reading this, I had this moment of inspiration when I actually saw the following. And for those of you who know me from my Ansible course or my open sourced Ansible labs that have had a quarter of a million Docker polls, you'll know that this uses Docker Compose and I'm both a huge fan of Docker and Docker Compose. So I was curious as to what role Docker Compose actually plays in creating Docker extensions. So I dived in and followed the instructions in the blog and the SDK guide, and I was able to create a fully functioning Docker desktop extension in less than a day. If I actually show you this here, when I actually install the extension, this actually appears on the sidebar there. And accessing this, we can access a node with a web terminal pre configured with Ansible. The username here is Ansible and the password is password. And as part of the extension launch, it automatically configures SSH keys between our nodes. So straight away, you could actually use Ansible right there in Docker Desktop if you want it. And I'll, I'll quickly show this here just by doing a Ansible ping of all of the other nodes with the Ansible CLI. So there we are. You can actually see that that's working. Here's how I actually created this extension. I started with the steps outlined in the blog and currently Docker extensions are in beta. So to get this Docker extension CLI functionality, I had to do some small steps. Quite simply, downloading this as a binary from the following location and then placing it in this directory. I've been speaking to the Docker development team and this will be included by default in an upcoming Docker desktop release. So depending on when you actually try this out, you may or may not actually need to do this. So once that's done, you can run Docker extension as a command line parameter as per the examples in the blog and the documentation. I created the boilerplate example, but I ignored the Golang and NPM React JS aspects that were created as part of this. Quite simply, I was more interested in working with the Docker Compose aspects like I just showed you. So I substituted my Docker Compose YAML from my Dive into Ansible lab and tried to run it. At this point, it didn't quite work. My lab uses host volume out and Docker desktop extensions use isolated paths to separate each extension. Therefore, the mount paths that I was using were actually invalid. I did some changes replacing the host path mount for local volumes. And with that, it didn't take too long to actually get this running or at least not showing errors. Now, when I got to this stage, I couldn't actually see if my containers were running. It looked positive, but there was actually nothing showing with a Docker PS A and I dug around a little bit, then I noticed this bit in the Docker Desktop Preferences under Extensions. So I toggled this option and then boom, 
we could actually see the containers were indeed running and not just one container but all of the containers in my compose file which was absolutely awesome at this point i was beyond excited so personally as i said i didn't actually need the golang or react aspects that came with the boilerplate code but there is a tremendous scope outside of what i've actually done and what i show in this video and this is actually covered in more detail in the SDK documentation. So do have a good look through that. My application is purely HTML. So I copied the HTML code into the UI directory for the extension. And quite simply, I uninstalled and reinstalled the extension. I checked again and my extension was actually running. When I clicked one of the terminals, I was then stuck in that terminal and had no way of actually getting back to the main page. So some things to actually be aware of here. As you can tell from this, the extension UI is essentially a browser built into Doc Desktop, but you've got no back or forward buttons. It's Docker Desktop, not a web browser so you'll need to actually factor this in to your extension design and development you'll be building a web app but all navigation will actually need to be handled as part of the extension that you design so i updated my app and implemented with the help of github some resources available for simple html tabs in a javascript slash css implementation and this uses iframes love them or hate them this worked well for me and it got my extension up and running quite quickly so i then updated my app so that all respective links opened as tabs as you can actually see here This was a good point to take a snapshot of my work and example. Then, quite simply, I edited and cleaned up all of the bits I didn't actually need. The build process for an extension is nothing more than a Docker file. So, you take that generated example, and quite simply, I then removed everything that I didn't need. And also, I deleted any files that I wasn't actually using. As part of the extension cookie cutter creation you also get this awesome make file which is really handy for the steps you might need so for example i can easily build a local copy of the extension by doing the following i can install the extension with make install dash extension you can even push the extension to Docker Hub, which is what I've done with this one. It's on Docker Hub, ready for anybody to actually use. By the way, pushing the extension to Docker Hub makes it really, really easy for other people to actually install and use your extensions without them actually needing to do any manual efforts. So as an example, this is a completely clean setup and with this extension CLI in place, someone could actually just run Docker extension, install, spur in, dive into Ansible dash extension, and they actually put the tag there of latest and boom, there you actually have it. The extension is running inside Docker desktop. Lastly, as this was actually going on github i then made a readme with instructions as per what you actually see here so if you want to use my efforts as a starting base then please go ahead play around with the extension fork it hack it make your own labs if you like and have a lot of fun i hope you found this useful and take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel and connect with me on the various different social networks. When you make an extension, let me know and also do reach out to the Docker team with feedback. I personally went back to them with a number of points for improvements as 
all of this is in beta at the moment. And all of the feedback I provided was taken very positively and they've logged all of this on their triage system for action. I'm confident after using this myself that the Docker Desktop Extension Marketplace is going to rock it. And you've got a great opportunity here to be part of something amazing at ground level. So on that note, good luck, dive into Docker Desktop Extensions, and I'll see you in the next video.